Hello, and welcome back to the channel. You join me in Hull, just outside the city's Paragon Interchange. Today, I'll be redoing a journey I covered a few years back, travelling with open access operator Hull Trains through to London in first class. Looking forward to this one, as last time I did this, the onboard catering was suspended due to the pandemic, so it'll be good to check that out today. Anyway, let's get into the station and head to London. In keeping with quite a number of stations in the north of England, Hull Paragon Interchange features both a train and bus station, all under one roof. Now, as I've said in the past, I really like this kind of setup, as it makes it really easy for arriving passengers to change from train to bus, and vice versa. As is the case with many of Britain's numerous Victorian railway termini, the station's architecture is pretty pleasing on the eye. Hull Paragon Interchange originally opened in 1848 as Hull Paragon Street and has been serving the city ever since. There isn't really a great deal on offer within the station in terms of shops, however there really is no need for there to be either, as the large and modern St Stephen's Shopping Centre is located just across the road from the station. Anyway, that's enough about Paragon Interchange, let's go and board our ride to London. The service I'll be catching today is the 1252 London King's Cross, which will be departing from Platform 7. By the way, I arrived here in Hull not even an hour ago on this Northern Class 155. I'll leave a link to that video in the top right corner if you're interested. Anyway, here's our train down to London. Hull trains operate a fleet of five of these class 802 bi-mode multiple units to operate what they call their Paragon services. These units were introduced in 2019 to replace the old Adelante units that Hull trains used to operate. The class 802s allow for a top operating speed of 125 miles an hour, although this could be increased to 140 miles an hour in the future with some minor modifications. Infrastructure permitting, of course. Right, let's get on board. As is customary, first class can be found towards the London end of the train. Now, there's nothing unexpected here. Hell Trains is class 802s feature the same smart but obnoxiously bright interior that you'll find on pretty much any of the class 800 family trains, but of course incorporating the purple of first group, who own whole trains into the interior design. As expected, first class features a 2 plus 1 seating configuration. Now I know that these seats aren't to everyone's liking, but I'm sure we can all agree that legroom is absolutely fantastic, even for someone over 6 foot such as me. Each seat, even the solo ones, have access to a nice big table, as well as both a regular and USB plug socket. While I know a lot of people have complained about the level of comfort that these seats offer, I personally have no issues with them. In my opinion, they offer a good amount of recline, are well shaped and feature a reasonable amount of padding, amounting to a comfortable experience. And lastly, you'll also find a window blind. Overall, pretty good for me. However, this is just my opinion, so do feel free to let me know what you think of these seats in the comments below. Anyway, before we set off, let's just take a quick look at the route we'll be taking today. We'll initially leave Hull on diesel power, travelling via the likes of Howden and Selby, before joining the East Coast Main Line and switching to electric power for the remainder of our journey south via Doncaster, Retford and Grantham, before finally arriving into London King's Cross at just after 25 to 4. Scheduled travel time is 2 hours and 46 minutes, reaching speeds of up to 125 miles an hour once we hit the East Coast Main Line. Smaller items can be stored in the overhead racks. 
The aisles and doorways should be kept clear. And we depart Hull on time at 12.50. The crew waste no time in starting the food and drink service, starting with a coffee and a biscuit. Now, the coffee wasn't all that great, being the sachet instant stuff that you get in cheap hotels. And, call me pedantic, but if you're going to go to the bother of providing a proper teacup, you could at least ensure that it's accompanied by a proper metal teaspoon, as opposed to the extremely cheap feeling and pretty useless wooden stirrer. Well, it surely was an unseasonably splendid winter's day. The clear skies and excellent visibility provided some great views of the Humber and the Humber Bridge, the latter of which our unit today is actually named after. Shortly after Howden, the main food offering is served. Unfortunately though, whole trains only offer these pre-packaged sandwiches, served with some crisps. When you consider that LNER, who are whole trains' main competitors nonetheless, offer an extensive first class menu, which even on weekends includes hot meal options and an extensive range of both soft drinks and alcohol. I think that the whole train's first class offering leaves a lot to be desired. Anyway, back outside we make a brief stop at Selby, shortly thereafter joining the East Coast Main Line for the remainder of our journey to London. Doncaster is our next calling point, a city which is of course steeped in railway history with the still operational Doncaster Works being located nearby. After Doncaster, we stop in Retford. Not all that many intercity trains stop here, with the station seeing around one LNER service every two hours in each direction, in addition to up to seven whole train services per day. Shortly after Retford, we pass over Newark Flat Crossing, which is the last such crossing in the UK where two standard gauge lines intersect. Around 10 minutes later, we arrive at our next and final intermediate stop of Grantham. From here, we'll run fast to King's Cross. Right, time for a wonder. Both first and standard class each have a space for a wheelchair user, which can, of course, be booked in advance. The rear three and a half coaches are where you'll find standard class seating. Nothing unusual here, just the normal 2 plus 2 configuration, and as is the case with most of the class 800 family of trains, a lot of the seats have very poor window alignment. One nice feature of these trains is that they feature these closed off spaces for bicycles and abnormally large items of luggage. The bicycle spaces can be used at no extra cost, but do need to be reserved in advance. 
And a quick word of warning for any passengers planning on travelling with hull trains in standard class. For some reason, they don't have any sort of onboard catering on offer. At first, I thought this was just something that had lingered on from the pandemic. But no, nope, they just seem to have completely done away with it. The door is now locked. As for the toilets, you'll find everything you might need here, including baby changing facilities. And I was pleased to find that everything was clean, well stocked, and in good working order. Lastly, this train is Wi-Fi enabled, although with speeds like this, I think they needn't have bothered. Finally, we go thundering past Bounds Green train maintenance depot, signalling that we are at the beginning of the end of our journey today. To be honest, I've been left pretty disappointed by what whole trains are offering here. The trains themselves are fine, but there appears to have been no effort whatsoever put in on the customer service side of things. A pre-packaged sandwich and instant coffee in first class, and nothing at all in standard class, really doesn't cut it for me. And it sort of makes me feel like whole trains really don't care all that much about their customers. As for the cost of today's trip, I paid £37.60, booking two days in advance. This price also includes railcard discount of a third. The full price ticket would have cost £57. For reference, a ticket on LNER on the same route often works out about the same, and the level of service offered is leaps and bounds ahead of what we experienced here. Although note that you would normally have to take a local northern service as far as Doncaster and then change there for an LNAR train. So, rather disappointing for me. However, that is just my opinion. So be sure to let me know yours in the comments below. We will shortly arrive at London King's Cross where this service will terminate. Please remember to take all your personal belongings with you and keep your tickets available for you. We pull into London King's Cross, bang on time, at 15.36. With that, I'm off to go and get something that'll satisfy my appetite a little better. However, in the meantime, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, as all of them help me out immensely. Special thanks as always to my fantastic patrons and channel members. If you want to join them in supporting the channel from just $1 per month, then you'll find the relevant links in the description below. With that, all that's left for me to say is thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all next Friday.